What's up, everybody? It's Coach JB with Hoop Study. Thank you very much for tuning in to our YouTube channel. Today, we are going to break down the University of North Carolina's secondary offense. We're going to listen to Roy Williams talk about it, and we're going to break down all of the different scoring options when they come out in transition. Now, don't forget, if you love this type of content, if you're a coach or a trainer and you need more support, all you have to do is go to hoopstudy.com and sign up for our Coaches and Trainers Academy. We have everything that you need. We have content for training your athletes and we have content for working on your offense and your defense. If you need help with this specific video, if you need more support, just put your questions in the comments and we're gonna get back to you. But if you need even more help, feel free to reach out to me directly at justin at hoopstudy.com and I will get back to you. And if you have any requests, there are topics that you want us to discuss, again, do the same exact thing. Throw it in the comments below or shoot me an email, justin at hoopstudy.com and we'll get that taken care of. Let's get it. Deron ran straight to the front of the rim, realizes the ball's there, so he's going to ball side block, trying to post up as much as he can. Our first job is throw him the ball. Okay, now if you can't throw him the ball, if the defense is already out on Marlin, okay, fake that to him just to draw the defense, but if the defense is already out there, you do not have to throw it to him. If the defense is back, you can pitch it ahead. Now we're flattened out, and you have one job, throw it to Toronto. okay? Now if you can't, if they put pressure here, it's great to skip it all the way to Josh at the top of the key, and now Teron, why didn't he throw you the ball? because you were fronted. So we'd have this, get back on the side. What's your name again? David. David. If David was fronting right there when Marlon had it and we skipped, then Teron should be able to hold off right here so we can go high-low, okay? But let's say that we didn't do that either, all right? Teron's coming across looking for the ball. David's doing a good job defensively not letting him get it. All right, throw it to Danny. All right, now then you're looking still. We're trying to get it into Teron. We want the ball to go inside. Okay, now then, somebody's going to say, well, what if they put, you know, guys back? Then we have good guys out here. If they put great pressure out there, then I'm going to get him to score every time or I'm going to find somebody that can. We're going to throw the ball to you inside. Okay, all right, now, Marlon, when you see the ball leave Danny's hand, okay, when you see it leave his hand, you're coming in just like this. Okay, and now you're coming and trying to set a rear screen right here. Okay, all right, you take a step like you threw it. All right, now you're going to the back. I said, Danny, it is Josh, right? I'm sorry. Josh is going for the lob. All right, and then Marlon, you would step out right here. Okay, all right, now Josh, as you went for the lob, Danny didn't throw it to you. You're going to finish by screening across for Teron. Teron must go the low side. Okay, all right. I don't know what they're going to do, but I do know if Teron and Josh do what they're supposed to do, we've got a chance to get a shot back here. All right, that is the end of our regular secondary. All right, so to review over those options, the first option is the hit ahead. Hit the home base runner, and they should be trying to score. Try to get to the basket, rip, get there. If you don't have the hit up pass to get in to have them rip and get to the basket, you could still hit up or you can hit the rim runner. So bury. Our second option is to bury. Our third option is to swing it to the top. Okay, now you can throw that high low pass or they can shoot a three or they can bury on the swing. So the rim runner is now getting the ball on the opposite side. If that's not there, the fourth option is to throw that lob to the trail man. And if that lob isn't there, that home base screener is going to step out, catch and shoot three. If the catch and shoot three isn't there, they're going to swing one more time and they're going to try to roll it into the rim runner who's getting a screen from the lob man. OK, and now if that action isn't there, all they do is take a bounce down towards the corner and we go straight into low to high. So understand these are all just scoring options every single time we go up the court. As soon as the ball comes off of the rim and we secure the rebound, we're automatically hitting up hit up to the home base runner or hit up to the rim runner. If we can't get it to the rim runner automatically, get it to the home base, let him throw it into the berry. If the berry's not there, you're just swinging it back up to the ball handler, okay? And then they're gonna bury on the swing, okay? 
And after that occurs, after they throw that pass back out to the ball handler, he's going to come up and set a screen for the trail man, and that's where that lob occurs. All right, and if that lob's not there, he's got a knockdown three. And if the three isn't there, he just swings more, one more time, and then they'll roll it in to the rim runner. And if that's not there, take a bounce down, and now we're straight into the low to high. All right, so now let's check out the film of this, so this way you can see how it progresses. Now remember, I want you to focus on first what your job is and your scoring options out of it, and then from there, try to learn everybody's options. So first things first, we're always trying to hit up to the home base runner. We're trying to score in transition early, so this way the defense can't set up in whatever it is that they want to set up in, whether that's a zone or if they're trying to press, we're up the floor beating them there before they can get there. And remember, we run five rounds all the time, so there's not very many teams that can run with us. And I do want you to pay attention if you're a rim runner, right here's that Gortat screen. If you beat them up there and they get the ball, then go ahead and screen for them. And again, these are all just scoring options for the hit up or the home base runner. If you have a catch and shoot three, go ahead and knock it down. We have guys who are chasing the glass, so this way you can feel comfortable shooting that shot. Next up, we have our rim run. Let's listen to Jay Billis talk about it. This big guy down runs right underneath the rim. That puts a ton of pressure on your transition defense to get back, and it also flattens out your defense. And then the second big, the trail big, is really dangerous, not just for a reversal, but you get the ball. So again, our second option is to hit that big running up the floor. Hit that rim runner. He's going to run that floor as hard as he can. If you can rim run, rim runners, pay attention to this. If you can rim run every single time, you can easily average 10 points per game with ease. Just run up the floor, beat everybody there, seal them off, and you'll get easy baskets every single time. And think about it this way. Even if it's not an easy basket for you, you're at least going to get fouled. Or if we could throw it into the rim runner, we'll be able to throw it back out for three. All right, so again, just rim run, beat everybody up the floor, pay attention to Carolina's bigs. They are sprinting the floor and they're beating everybody up to the rim every single time. Whether that's off of a rebound or a made shot, they're sprinting up the floor directly to the rim and then they're dunking it afterwards. This is what we want you guys to do. We want you to run up the floor, beat everybody there. If you can hit straight from the ball handler to the rim runner, then go ahead and do it. If you have to hit to home base first and then hit the rim runner, do that. But all things considered, we want to make sure that we're hitting the rim runner every single time up the floor. All right, so now afterwards, let's say that this pass wasn't actually there. We're just going to swing it to the trail man. And now when the trail man gets the ball, he has the option to shoot or drive if he wants to. So we saw in the first clip, he shot that three. On the second one, after they swing it to the trailer, he just drives. Now the other option is once they swing it over to the trailer, he can throw that high low pass. And trust that they are going to do this. We're training this every single day with the rim runner and the trail man. So this way they know all of their scoring options. Our third option is to bury on the swing. So here we swing the ball and you can see that the rim runner is still burying on the opposite side of the rim. All right, so that option is there. After you rim run, if you don't get the ball, make sure that you follow the ball because you're gonna get that scoring option on the other side. And now while this occurs, I'm not sure if you've noticed it or not, but the lob option still goes. So they still get that foot in the paint and set that screen. So understand that this whole action is just flowing the entire time. So once that swing occurs, if you're the rim runner, make sure you're burying on the other side because you could get this pass. Our fourth option is the lob. This is obviously the most exciting one. Make sure that if you are a home base runner, you are timing this. As soon as you pass the ball to the top, you're automatically getting a foot in the paint and then head hunting the trail man's defender. All right, so see it here, gets a foot in the paint and then head hunts the trail man's defender and screens him. Look at it again, swing it out, get a foot in the paint, head hunt the trail man screener, throw the lob. Now home base runner, after you set that screen, if the lob isn't there, you get to take a catch and shoot three. So 
hit the screener afterwards, and knock down that three. So again, these are all progressions. You go, you get a foot in the paint, you set that screen, pop out, knock down three. Our sixth option is to throw it into the rim runner or roll it into the rim runner. All right, so there's that screen on the baseline and we're gonna hit him on the other side. We don't really have any good clips of Carolina doing this. All right, but again, basically all you're gonna do is go through the entire play and then once you get that screen on the backside, you're gonna roll it over into him. So here, you can see that he was open, but they didn't give it to him, so they gave it to the trail man instead. Lastly, we're gonna flow directly into low to high. So after we go through it, you get that low ball screen. The point guard's just gonna dribble down there. He'll get that low, and if it's not there, then he's gonna kick it out. Let's pay attention to how they run this and listen to how loud they are and watch how they're sprinting up the floor. All right, so to sum it all up, just a reminder, our first option is always to hit up to the home base runner or the rim runner, okay? If those options aren't there, hit the home base runner so this way they can hit the rim runner as they bury their defender in transition. If that's not there, you're gonna swing it and the rim runner is going to the other side of the rim. They're gonna follow the ball and they're gonna bury again, okay? If that option's not there, the trail man is getting a screen from the original home base runner for a lob. And if that lob's not there, the home base runner, the screener, is just going to step out and they got a catch and shoot three. Okay, and then if that catch and shoot three isn't there, they swing one more time and they're going to roll it into the rim runner who's getting a screen from the trail man. Now remember, rim runner. When that screen is set, you're going on the low road side. So go towards the baseline. Don't go over top of the screen. And if that's not there, the person who has the ball in their hands, they're just going to take a bounce down towards the baseline and you come out and we start that low to high action.